Now to the first of a two-part report about how patients and their doctors are faring in their efforts to cure or manage different cancers. It's been four decades since President Nixon signed a law that would change the way cancer research was funded in an effort to develop better treatments. Tonight, NewsHour health correspondent Betty Ann Bowser looks at what's happening in the battle against pediatric cancer. Sixteen-year-old Kate Albrecht knows this drill all too well. After she lies down on the table, a big machine called a linear accelerator delivers high-energy radiation to shrink and kill the cancer cells she has from stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma. While most teenage girls busy themselves with boyfriends and text messaging, Albrecht's days have been filled with more sobering activities. Three months of chemotherapy followed by these radiation treatments. The cancer was discovered last summer. I was totally surprised that I even had cancer. It was not something I was expecting. Nobody saw it coming. Except for a slight cough, Albrecht had been an active, healthy, competitive runner and skier in Lake Tahoe. Yeah. But after the diagnosis, Albrecht and her mother, Linda, moved temporarily to Palo Alto to have treatment at Lucille Packard Children's yeah, Hospital at Stanford yeah. University. Hey, how about this one, you and your grandpa? I actually like that one. You know, I have a no pretty hair. cute picture of you and Today, your Today, Albrecht is counting the days until her red hair grows back. Her prognosis is excellent, and her mother, who's been at her side through all the treatment, is optimistic. Forty years ago, if this had happened, what do you suppose the two of you would have been looking at? Oh, boy. Uh, definitely not as good a prognosis as we've had. Um, I don't know what they would have done 40 years ago as far as all the drugs and treatments that they've come up with, they did not have that then. So we may have been looking at something a whole lot scarier. You will get no argument from cancer researchers on that point. Forty years ago, more Americans were dying from cancer than all the people killed in World War II. But in 1971, the National Cancer Act was signed. It provided billions of federal dollars for cancer research and became known as the War on Cancer. How are you? Dr. Michael Link was a young pediatric oncologist 40 years ago. Today, he's one of Albrecht's doctors at Stanford and the current president of the American Society of Clinical Oncologists. At that time, we were curing about 40% of children with cancer. And in that interval, in that past 40 years or 35 years that I've been on the scene, the cure rates have, have improved dramatically such that now we cure probably 80% of all children with, uh, with cancer, and we cure uh, almost 90% of children with acute lymphoblastic leukemia, the most common childhood cancer, and a disease that was absolutely incurable in the 1960s. One of the discoveries that has led to success with children was learning the nature okay. of the disease, right, something that was not fully understood 40 years right. ago. Cancers are diseases of our genetics, of our DNA. And we develop uh, mutations in those cancer cells, and those mutations are what cause the cancer and what drive the cancer. And we now understand, for example, in a, in a disease like leukemia, that there are multiple different types of leukemia, even though they look the same under the microscope, which are driven by a different one of these DNA mutations. Understanding the nature of cancers also led oncologists to learn that childhood cancers are genetically less complex than most adult cancers and respond better to both chemotherapy and radiation treatment. But there was a time when doctors did not have the resources they do today to target specific gene mutations with drugs. One of Link's first patients was Nancy McGee, diagnosed in 1978 with stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma, just like Kate Albrecht. Back in those days, oncologists tried to kill the cancer in children without killing the patient first. McGee has vivid, painful memories of all that. They put me into radiation, that was first, and then from there uh, into chemo, which was, I wouldn't put that on my worst enemy. That's what, in my mind, almost killed me. They, I didn't have all my treatments because it was literally killing me. 
I was 100 pounds and I went down to 64 pounds. Yeah, it was skin and bones, literally. I wasn't eating because I was constantly sick. Dr. Link remembers those days too. In the 1970s, we were desperate to have therapies that worked and she was uh, a lucky to have a disease like Hodgkin disease, which was responsive to radiation and chemotherapy. And so we threw the book at her, if you will, to try to cure and she presented with very advanced stage disease. Today at 46, McGee is a lab manager at Stanford University's School of Medicine. But like most of the pediatric cancer survivors of the 1970s, she's paid a high price for survival. She's had thyroid cancer, skin cancer, and in 2001, the biggest scare, a routine mammogram identified very early breast cancer. McGee could have settled on a more conservative treatment, but because of her previous radiation exposure, she opted for a double mastectomy. I could not have a lumpectomy and radiation. I had to have a mastectomy. And as soon as I heard that I had breast cancer, I already knew in the back of my head I was having a double. I was not going to go through this twice. Because I was heavily radiated on my right side. The breast cancer was on the left side of my left breast. So it wouldn't be if Nancy gets it on the right side, it's when. Dr. Lake, hi. <laughs> Today, 32 years after first being diagnosed, McGee still sees Dr. Link and takes part in clinical trials. We've probably learned more from you than almost anybody else. You've had like every possible, every possible thing that we see, so well, it was worth it. I'm here. I was put on this planet for some reason. I'm still trying to figure out what, but you know, I have a son who I adore. I never knew if I'd have kids. Back then, I don't know if they really knew what chemo would do to a reproductive system of a 13-year-old child. So when I conceived my son, it was like, in my mind, a miracle, you know? And so I just, as they say, carpe diem, I just, I seize the day. I live each day to the fullest that I can, you know, try to be happy. In the last decade, Dr. Link has seen the benefits of clinical trials, in which as many as 80% of all children with cancer participate. For the next generation of the Nancys that come to us for treatment, we're going to do a better job. We're going to do it with less uh, morbidity, less complication, uh, and hopefully so that they can Im have an improved quality of life. This is way more complicated than we thought. Cancer is not one disease. Cancer is a multitude of diseases. The future is based on really understanding this molecular basis or the, the genetics and the, and the DNA damage that causes cancers. We're understanding what, are the, what drives the cancer and we're trying to develop very, very specific drugs that target those, that target those specific abnormalities. While doctors like Link are excited about curing more pediatric cancers, many adult cancers remain stubbornly resistant with no cures in sight. On our website, we're collecting photos of your connections to childhood cancer. You can find instructions on how to participate on our health page. And Betty Ann's next report looks at some of the adult cancers and what's, going, what's being done to find breakthrough treatments.